come, it's come to my attention that people can disrespect you with this, like they don't think that they're worth the money. So it is what it is. Um, you were technically, you have to stick with your guns when it comes to negotiations. So, Recently, just went through this turbo tax, and they threw me right close to what I want. And now they double my hourly pay. And I'm through going through every process. And they are flexible. They can make twenty to forty dollars an hour on any other side projects that anybody's trying to do. Make sure your rates fair to everybody in the budget, and make sure you can pay. Just informed by my assistant that just informed by my assistant we are having a mental health advocate on the show today. And she is the founder of Morel is known as Home Health, Home Health. I'm a dedicated individual for providing comprehensive online resources and supportive group meeting, focused on autism, anxiety, ADD, depression, and bipolar test one and two. 
drawing upon my DA in psychology and Penn State University of Chiefs and the very valuable personal experience of three from three from children different from each of these starting uh things are then rich by diverse roles including serving to the CNA for its own possibility. So these are very important things for a responsible mother to have. Difficult as it is for sure at the moment, especially about the things that are going for me, is trying to put things on the clients, trying to collect certain things and expectations off of people. This is why it's sometimes a pain in the rear end when dealing with people. So, this lady will give us tips and tricks of how to be more clean and calm and collective. Like the flip side is we have some unstable people in here that don't think right. Or well, think straight. And that's how it goes sometimes. We have people blocking the alleyway and they need to be towed. Anyway, it's 100 degrees here today and it's very, very hot. So if you're in Philadelphia, please keep it cool. We do have a heat warning effect with the pandemic. So it's one of those things that we just got to keep cool. Uh, we haven't asked the caller questions as well.
कर रहा है Hey, good evening. Welcome to the industrious illumination show. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I was reading your bio, and it's very, very interesting because this day and age, we may need more people like you to help out with these different kids with disabilities and being a mental health advocate because uh, some of these kids are unpredictable. basically, because they've been in a classroom. Some of them have mood swings. Some of them are cool, calm, and collective. Um, and getting them to learn is the toughest part. Um, so I'm going to just introduce yourself and uh, tell me what you do. Well, my name is Lorelai Molinari, and I started a nonprofit charity to serve a thousand souls this year with mental health challenges such as autism, ADHD, anxiety, depression, bipolar, you name it. We meet on Zoom, and we meet in groups for about an hour, and I meet people three times a day, every day except Sunday. Wow, that's a heck of a job. That's a big responsibility. And it's kind of like being a special education teacher with like nine kids in a classroom that are autistic, except there's one dis uh, disability dysfunction in the whole class, but then you got a whole mixture of them like in all different other classes as well. So you definitely have a challenge there. Um, and it seems like it's something you enjoy. Uh, what's, your, what's your doctoral degree in? I do not have a, a university doctoral. I am a mother of three autistic ADHD children. I have, I have spent the last 35 years researching as much as I can to see if there was any way I could make the next generation better. than the last one. Sounds good. Sounds good. So what I'm understanding is you don't, I thought I saw a doctor by your name, then, didn't I? Am I wrong? No, I'm not a doctor. I have a BA in psychology. Oh, okay. Okay. For some, that might have been a typo by one of my assistants. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. It's okay. It's all good. Hey, but that's still good because I'm telling you what I mean. When I was a teenager, I went through a lot of struggles. Mental health. Oh, yeah. Crisis. Yep. You got it. And, you know, it got me through it, you know, of who I am today. So, I mean, it's, things get frustrating at times. You have disabilities that you overcome, you know, there's different other people. When you help them with the disabilities, you know, some some of the kids get down about, oh, I'm not learning as fast enough. But if you give them the push and the motivation and the introduction in the classroom to show that you're there for them, then there's no doubt about it that they'll pull through with what they want. But then you have some that just don't want to even try um, and, you know, don't want to give the effort to it. coming from a classroom. But then you still have to pass the law is the law, whether they Well, come in different, different I'm types sure, of disciplines. I'm sure glad you're not calling these people differently abled minds, because when No, I heard absolutely that, no, no, I would never I was, say that. I was like, that's just semantics. Let's talk about something real. I myself have been disabled for 30 years, since my 20s. Okay. Yeah. Everybody has something they overcome. I have a left muscle disorder here that I can still, I was supposed to have cerebral palsy, but I don't have it. It's a miracle. Because like Yes. 10% of the people, 10% 10, 10 of the people usually have their arm cut off, one. Number two, I don't usually share it too much because it doesn't really affect me that much. I can still lift, I can still run, you know, whatever. But the biggest part is when you're overcoming stuff like this, it makes you like, are you different than everybody else? No, you're not. You can do the same thing that everybody else can. Just because somebody has 
disabled does not mean that you really squat. So no. whether you have two muscles, one muscle, you know, one bone missing or, you know, a broken leg or something or not a, not your IQ above 70, I mean, it's, yeah, you're not going to, no, there's no way. Um, it's one of those things. Yes. So I got five questions here for you. Let's see how this goes. I want to hear the answers on this one. How can we make the world a more comfortable and accepting place for people with differently abled minds? Okay. She said I already told you how I felt about that. Yeah, I will talk to her about that because this is not the way you I mean differently abled minds. Why is that question on here? She should have reworded that. I, yeah. No, she should have just said with special disabilities. That's special what she meant. Special mental health challenges. Yeah. It's all the same damn thing. It's just that yeah. we have to spend less time with semantics and we need to get our butts in gear and help these people. What would be very yes. practical would be now we're having more people with mental disabilities. And we need spaces like quiet spaces that we could go to when we're having sensory overload. We yeah. need to educate people about what these different disabilities are and what they have all in common. A lot of people freak out because they're overstimulated. They need to go someplace quiet. Right. And sometimes, you know, like, for instance, you can't make them learn everything in one day. You have to kind of, like, pace them out. They have to go for a break, go for a walk, just like a normal, anybody. Anyway, yes. you know, they're a normal person, but it's like one of those things that they're at, everybody's at different level. Like, for instance, I wouldn't know anything. I mean, I know a lot about mental health, student disabilities, because I've dealt with it, you know, with right. the tutoring and teaching part. I have to have a frame of mind going there, knowing how you're going to make a difference in their life and also know how they're going to do it right, how they're going to make, it. you know what I mean, make the parents feel comfortable with who the tutor, the teacher, or the mental health advocate is to control their situation. Because some of them might, you never know what, you know, some of them explode, some of them think feel suicidal, some of them feel depressed, some of them don't feel anything. It's yes. all a mixture of emotions. And yes, they everybody in a, in a kind of differently abided mind, it makes sense for what she said, but she should word it better because everybody is different it's not just them if everybody was so different what they weren't different then everybody it would be a boring world everybody was the same everybody has growth personality different you know everybody everybody looked the same the world would be boring so that's why there's different you know you got big people small people so you know, everybody so you know definitely you know what they all have in common though What's that? Whether it's a physical or a mental disability, the main thing is they want to be heard. They want you to know that they're in there and they want to make some decisions themselves. And a lot of people look at disabled people like they're children and don't have a mind at all. That is yeah. what I have found through seeing 239 people this year. Different people with different disorders. Interesting. They've all come oh, yeah. up with the same thing. Shut up and listen to me. Stop talking. I may not need advice, you know. I've yeah. had people blunt like that, but most of them are, are very um, 
passive and afraid, like you're going to hurt them if they say something wrong. Right. And what, we, what we need to do as people is to open our hearts and our minds to people that are different than us and give them room to do their business. If they need help, they will ask you. Yes. As long as you appear to be an open person. Right. You have to be open-minded. That There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it with the kids. And it's calm. And very calm. No negativity. No yelling. No. Or anything. Absolutely no. not. No. So let's see. Question number two. What are some everyday struggles that that students with disabilities struggle with an individual face and how they we better support them. So how do we better support students with disabilities? Well, there's the sensory issues we got, and then there's people with um, blindness, for example. We could give them more accessible websites it's something that the average person takes for granted but our young people are spending much more time than we could ever fathom on the internet and they yes. get they get to places that aren't very friendly and they get angry yep yes Yes. And yes. then there's the normal stuff about the physical disabilities. There's so many places that aren't set up for people with wheelchairs or crutches. I know myself because I'm on physical occupational and speech therapy. I had a stroke. So oh, on wow. top of mental disability... I'm learning to walk again. So, wow. you know, <laughs> you got to speak up or yep. you stay homebound. Yep, that's right. That's right. You have to give, give these people enough confidence and encouragement that they get bold and they start saying what they need and we don't have to drag it out of them because they're afraid. Right, right. Um, I will say this. My dad had a stroke a while back. And I'm telling you what, when it happened, that was a turnaround I'd never even thought about or being prepared for. And it happened. Um, I was at home. And he was shooting pool with his friends. And he tried to go home. And I guess his blood sugar went up or something. Ran into a guardrail, smacked it all the way down. Cops stopped him, thought he was drinking. Wasn't drinking, he had a stroke. And one of the cops had called, and then all of a sudden, you know, my brother said, hey, you got to get, you know, I was busy with a tutoring client at the time uh, when I lived in western Pennsylvania, when I lived in Philly. And it was the most dramatical moment. Sitting there, what did I have to do? I mean, it was one of those things. And then it took him two weeks where he could talk and all this other stuff, memories and stuff like that. And then he went back to work three or four months later. So then people can turn around real quick. Just because you have a stroke does not mean stuff. It just depends on how tough and annoying you are to go back, learn how to talk, um, and walking and memory. Memories are the biggest thing. Oh, yeah. Try to remember. And it also depends on how severe the stroke is as well. So, yeah, we definitely, and I highly encourage you not to give up. At anybody's age, they can do whatever they need to do, to do what Absolutely. they got to do. Absolutely. Have, a, have, you have pure determination. If you helped out all these kids with autism and any of the other disabilities, then that's, that's totally having a good heart, having a lot of patience, and God will bless you. Sure. Because God a, has blessed me. There you go. I have three beautiful 
very different children because they're not all on the same spectrum. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention they're autistic, right? The autism kids. Different yeah. Types of cool, cool. Yeah, it's like um, there was one lady I worked with at the school that she had an autistic son and she just rolled right through it. She knew exactly what to do, how to control them and stuff like that. And I'm like, wow, it's amazing. My, yeah, some of my son was called at the time infantile autism. And my husband had left me and I was having three children under six with autism. And they said to me very clearly, do not leave this hospital with that child. We'll take him and put him someplace where they will care for him. And I said, absolutely not. I'm his mother. That is my job. Well, what do you know? You know, they were talking to a, a kid with a GED and two, two hanging on her, you know. I, I looked incompetent. But I made sure that I wasn't. I learned everything that I could learn about autism. And I didn't get it from the doctors. Because even nowadays, you got to explain your particular disability to the doctors. Because they do their rotation in their specified field. And they know nothing more. I know that sounds like I'm beating up doctors, but they don't run the med schools. No, no, that's not, you're not. You have every right to give them feedback because let me tell you what, when you get a doctoral degree, you're held up at a higher stand. Like me, I have two master's degrees and I'm held at a higher stand. Yes. So if, I, if I fail a student, that means I fail. That's what I'm saying. It's a serious approach and serious attitude. Like you're a mental health advocate. You help different students with different disabilities. You fail at that, that's your career right there. You know what I mean? You have to succeed. You know what I mean? It's, it's not my career. I don't oh, yes. get paid for any of this. I do this oh, wow. all for free. Wow. That's why I started a charity to fundraise to pay for things like Zoom and computer software I need. Wow, I, that's amazing. I have many YouTube channels. I post in social media about awareness. And I got the Google Grants now, and I'm going to go out and get me some more people to help because this year our campaign is to hear a thousand voices. I'm on 238. I'm going to help as many as I can. But I've been disabled for over 30 years. I have managed to take care of my family and in turn them take care of me now with this physical therapy and all that stuff. But... Do you have any other questions? Yes, that's three more. Three more. Okay. How can we help students with disabilities embrace their uniqueness and find their strengths? Well, first of all, we have to stop treating people with disabilities like they need something fixed. We are not broken. We are just different. Right. We need to celebrate their unique perspectives on the world. Mm -hmm. And make opportunities for them. There's a, a, a famous group called Toastmasters. Have you heard of them? No, tell me. They're from like the 60s, 70s. They used to teach businessmen how to give speeches and how to be um, present and in charge. 
and articulate. They're still going nowadays, and we have a narrow, diverse Toastmasters. I think, I think there's about 20 of us worldwide in it. People that want to learn to speak better. We need to have more opportunities like that. And I think mentorship would be a really good thing. An older person that has gone through their difficulties would be great for the, the people. Just some scaffolding to hold them up until they're strong enough to advocate for themselves. That's what we could do to help them find their uniqueness. Yes, exactly. That's a good answer. I mean, because everybody needs to find uniqueness. Now, whether you have zero degrees, whether you have an IQ of below 70 or an IQ of 200, I mean, everybody has to find their path in the direction. Like in the Wizard of Oz, follow the yellow brick road. Yes. So, Yes, and definitely, definitely, definitely interesting. They would do so well if they just had a mentor. Yeah, because if they have somebody to look up to, then they can get on base off of them. Um, you know, sometimes they chill and hang out with them too. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yep. Somebody that you could say made it. Yes. A lot of a lot of mothers ask me questions. They're like, "What do you do with three? I'm like, "I prayed, and I was very patient." Yeah, and I read. The hardest part of that job, I, that I can't say for myself, but I've just heard other mothers think, "So I need a job to do, but get get it done." You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. We we have excellent programs here in Pennsylvania. I yeah. think I think all all over the country, but the Goodwill program takes mentally and physically handicapped children in their teens and train them for the workforce. My son is a stunning example. He has mental retardation, they call it. It's not a nice Earn, but it just means that his IQ is way below 70. But he's had the same job now nine years, four days a week, five days, five hours, and he never misses unless it's camp time. Yeah. We and he, was, he, uh, was, he was supported by a mental health the um a mental health grant that sends him to respite sends him a job coach that gave him this training and granted he's not running the company but he's the most likable uh person there the most well known and he knows all the customers' names and and what they come in shopping for. That's unique, yeah. But I've seen some brilliant kids myself. They they remember the planets on the top of their head, how far it's from the sun, uh, different astronomers and stuff like that, and they just brought all the numbers over the top of their head. How'd you do that? <laughs> I I couldn't do it. No. But I'll tell you, when it came to anything academic, he had no interest except the Civil War because he had a relative in there. But he's smart when it comes to anything, action figures. You know, Marvel, G.I. Joe, Transformers. <laughs> he knows statistics on all that. That's his hyper focused activity. Lovely, 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 lovely. Yep. That's another thing. Everybody has a different activity or hobby that they want to do 
in school and also after school, they keep their lives going. You know what I mean? So, you know, you can do anything if you want, as long as you can believe that you can accomplish it. And anybody can accomplish anything as long as they put their minds. I never told him he couldn't do anything. Right. He, he still has it on his mind that he's going to drive. And physically, he could drive. Anybody can do that. So if you meet the minimum requirements and pass it, you're good. Yep. But with, with the IQ thing, he has to have text readers or a person to read him a paragraph. But he could answer the question right, no problem. Because he's, he's heard that manual read forwards and backwards. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you got some more questions. Yes, two more to go. <laughs> what are some common misconceptions about students with disabilities that you'd like to clear up? Oh, I'd like to clear this one up. It's not a deficit. It is a different way of seeing the world and processing. It's not a deficit. And some can be incredibly smart and talented. You know, some may be music prodigies. Some may be math prodigies. Like my son, he knows everything about action figures. They all have different things that, that they're good at. And we should stop looking down at them like, like they're wounded children or somebody that we need to fix. We need to embrace them as they are and see what help they need. And it's going to be different for each person. Yeah. We got to go into the relationship with the person we want to help. Like... It's a sales call, like it's a discovery call. I'm going to tell him about my experience, and he's going to tell me about his life and his experience. I think that if we approached more things like that, with, yeah. with, with these people, they would do so much better. And I hate to say it like normal and and abnormal, but the average person could help these people with disabilities if they just were open and listened. It's the same thing. You got to be open, you got to listen, and you got to do what they want. What They may want some kind of help that you've never done before that you got to learn right yeah and trust me when i get clients like that it's something like yep i'm open and trainable to doing this or doing that so yes you have to take the time out for them as much as possible to make sure that they're happy and satisfied with what you're doing for them you have to make a relationship with uh the coach, the parents, and yourself. You gotta be like a little family and you gotta share the information with each other. Cause you each are doing different roles. Yep. That's for sure. That was the that was the success to my son's story is we had great communication and he had speech and OT and physical therapy to get him going. And, you know, once he talked, <laughs> we were in good shape. 
once he potty trained, life became easier. He was 11. So that was 11 years of wanting a child to go potty. He made up his mind one day, took off the diaper, put his, put his pants back on, and said he was going out. And he's never had any major accident. They have a mind of their own, even if they have learning problems. Oh, yeah. Yep. He's very, very, very strong-willed. Yep. I homeschooled all my kids. They got a custom one-on-one -on -one education till high school. And when they went to go online to high school, guess who was the teaching assistant? Me, I, I care. And when I couldn't advocate for myself last year is when I decided that my kids don't need me as much and the world needs these services that are just laying dormant. Yeah, it's true. So it's a calling. It's I can't call it a career. I I feel very led. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Totally awesome. <clears throat> yeah, where are you? Um, are you from Pennsylvania or are you from? Yeah, she didn't say it in the bio at all. Uh, where do you reside at? I reside near Pittsburgh. Oh, wow. Okay, I used to live out there. Okay, live there. I live in White Oak. It's by oh. McKeesport. Yes, yes, off the route there. Yes, I know where that's at. I got people that I know out that way. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I, am, I am planted here. I came here because my mother had married a Navy man and he retired in his hometown. So I moved out here. I've been here 18 years. Wow. God planted me here for something. I prayed. I looked around. I went back to college. I can tell you that there is a growing need out there. I used to oh, there is. Substitute there is. in the Altoona. Somerset, Blair, and Bedford counties area, and I'm telling you what, I can't imagine Pittsburgh going through right now because every Philadelphia always has shortages, just like Pittsburgh. So there's shortages, and there's stigma, and there's taboo things in cultures. People call me from other countries because they can't talk about mental health in their country or they'll be like a leper you know so uh, my initiative to help is a global thing now it just happened that people off linkedin started really networking with me they're like, we don't need it. We got these big jobs, but we know these people that that need some help. They don't have insurance. I'm like, you don't have to worry about insurance. I'm not a doctor. You don't have to pay me. I'm glad to listen to whatever you want to talk about. Mm. And everybody has something they want to talk about. Especially after years of not being heard. Can you imagine? Yeah. That would be like the biggest lottery ticket to get somebody to listen to you. I know this from firsthand experience. We just got to get boots on the ground, you know? It's a, it's a mental wellness fight. 
-hmm. and there are nobody is coming to help us so we have to get people from our communities to step up and organize these things and it's much better if you can do it in person but zoom is the next best thing to being there in person yep, yep. if i could have all my clients on zoom I'd be happy but guess what some of them just need in person that's it it is what it is yes and that's how it happens and that's how it goes okay let's go to the final question here how can we create a society where students with disabilities feel valued heard and empowered to thrive well as a society we really need to listen and involve us i'm talking from the perspective of the disabled person i'm just giving you what i would need to feel included in society we would need some inclusive policies in the work and in the in our schools and support services for getting to events in the community um to teach people to be empathetic not sympathetic empathetic so that they could put themselves in our shoes and we'd have a better chance of contributing to society if we were felt like we were supported heard and valued we want to be valued we don't want to just be tolerated it's past that time we know enough about our disorders to know that we didn't do anything bad and we have a lot to contribute but there's a uh, kind of a hmm. normal people don't like to let us contribute they want us to sit quietly in the chair and not get in their way while they get the work done. We want to help them get the work done. And a lot of us are more capable than you may think. And that's yep. how we we get valued, heard, and we thrive. Very good. Very good. Now, that's how it Exactly, you hear it right on the nose. There has to be a boost, um, you know, and so on and so forth with boost of confidence. Because some of them have very low self esteem and they need that you know, call energetic comment to get them going. Like, Let's go. Do this. They need that, but yeah. society needs to learn to be in a helper kind of mode, not a restrictor of activities. Unfortunately, some people have to be restricted or they'd hurt themselves, but don't automatically think that every autistic person is every autistic person because they're all completely different. I have three kids all on different ends of the spectrum i've got one on the high end she drives she's had children really? i have one in the middle she went to beauty school she drives she could never have children my son wants children loves them thinks the whole world would be better if there were more autistic people in the world, he thinks from a very simple, loving mind. 
those three kids all came from the the same mother. <laughs> they're they're all completely different, but they all have the same thing in common that they're strong, they're hard workers. They got the support they needed at the time they needed it, which was when they were young. We've let a lot of kids slip through the school system and we didn't we didn't question some of the the things that were happening to them. And now we have a whole bunch of autistic ADHD kids all grown up on YouTube. I I know a few. <laughs> They're the nicest people, but they all say the same thing. Boy early intervention if somebody would have just listened to me because i look back the signs were there we just didn't know yep exactly exactly yep and now we have adults that don't have the coping skills and we need to support these people. It doesn't mean they have to stay at home and do nothing. They can have jobs. They may not just be able to handle a full-time job because of their processing and sensory issues. And the people with physical disabilities, same thing. It's all going to be different depending on what bonuses they have and what things they lack. But they can be coached into being a productive member of society. I just, you know, we don't want to call them off our team. They may, they may be some of our strongest players because they think outside the box. They have great ideas. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Did you have any more questions or anything you want to ask me? Um, I just think it's unbelievable that you, that you do it as a volunteer, because most people would look for paid, paid but, opportunities. It's great that you do that, though. I, I think that's unbelievable, because in this time and age, everybody wants to be paid for everything, because nothing's free. You know what I mean? Nothing, and nothing is free. I had to spend my personal money to get my charity <laughs> paperwork in and then when I thought I had it all done I had to pay ransom to the IRS for that 501c3 oh, registration man. $275 you know a lot of paperwork but I'm glad I'm here and now I can encourage others to come help i'm in a great group on linkedin it's called the encouragers we are all heart-based businesses and people some of us are coaches some have the disabilities themselves and are running a business I mean, it's amazing when you get into a group of people being transparent and trying to help the others. It's a, a new group, but it is exciting the people that we have already. Yeah. The, the reward I get from all this it's so much better than a paycheck. The people's reactions on their face 
when they finally get it or I get it, what they're saying. It's just wonderful. I, I definitely bet it is. Everybody has a different approach. Well, I'm not saying we shouldn't have doctors or therapists or psychiatrists or psychologists. We all have our our way to help these people. We all have different hats we wear. I'm the connection in the community that some people need because they're estranged from family because certain disorders don't tend to react well on certain kinds of medications and oh, you yeah. have all, all kinds of acting out problems so I look at myself as maybe a buffer between a lot of people getting frustrated, angry, and ending up in the hospital because their condition is out of whack or somebody that has just lost it and gone out in the community and broken things and started fighting because they aren't being managed emotionally or taking the wrong meds or taking meds and and alcohol at the same time. Yeah. I want to be careful that. Yes. I was being kind. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I mean some people don't realize what they can do. But anybody could do what I was doing. There's a lot of people. Yeah, it's true. Very, very true. But if you don't have any more questions, then I will go because I have some people I'm meeting up with in five minutes. Okay, no problem at all. I do have your contact info through email and then also... Review the show. Give it five stars if you wouldn't mind. I got a link here. I got everybody that's done five stars. Um, I do apologize about the way she worded that. I will talk to her about that. In fact, I did already through a text message. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things. So, yes, I don't it. think she did not do it um, on purpose. A no. lot of people think that way. Right. I get it. I get Can it. Can you make sure she has has given me everything? Because I didn't even know your name till yesterday. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. So the thing is, the video is going to be up on YouTube. Yeah. It'll be up on Instagram and it'll also be up on Facebook. On LinkedIn? It, LinkedIn and me don't get along. Okay. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, because they decided to disable my account because of just being the way they are. So yeah. But anyway, okay. I appreciate it. I, I sent you a link over there. Uh, give me five stars for the show. Tell me what you think. Um, it goes to a website. I've already had other guests uh, sent over there. Um, and it was definitely nice to get to know you and then very interesting and uh, some of the stuff I didn't know, that, that's even better because, I mean, it's just one of those feedback like where, hey, everybody's going through a lot and overcoming challenges is one of the biggest things in life that everybody has. Yes. For sure. You can't just lay down and die because you have a disability. You need to think outside the box and get your butt up and get going. Because yep. nobody's going to help you unless you open your mouth and say, I need some help. Yeah. Yep. And that's, that's what I had to do. When I had this project and I wanted to do this, I had to say to people, I have all the time in the world. I just don't have 
all the money in the world. Right, yeah. And and people have been fabulous since since I started talking in audio rooms and podcasts and things like that. Um people have come out with just amazing things, uh, money, but mostly the ones that donated their services to me have been just incredible. I couldn't afford a website hosting domain names. I mean, I was starting out with on a shoestring. And, you know, once I got got the status then more people came out unbelievable great i can't wait to get this up there and see what yeah type of um i don't see anything in the chat can you uh email it to me the show info or the link or whatever it is oh yeah absolutely if you want me to i can do that yeah sure i'll give you the review oh uh, wait it won't let me minimize the screen. Oh, how about this? How about this? Um, I'll give how you. This? How about if you give me your phone number and I'll text you it? Text you it. Okay. 724 506 2999. Okay. And I'll just uh, I'll do that right away. I'll give you the links and everything like that. And okay. It should be, this has been over an hour or so. I had some uh, 15 minute other stuff to do with the floor and show game. Um, but, anyways, yeah, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate your time and helping us get this out there. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, if you need any help getting it, I would love to be a part of something like that. If there's any way I can be a part of it, let me know. Because I'm okay. always helping. I want to help students with disabilities too. I really do. I'm a special education teacher and everything like that. If I can fit anywhere in that, just let me know if I can help. Okay. Now that I know the secret man's name. <laughs> I'm sorry that you didn't know that. If you look me up, I'm an author. I'm a tutor. I'm a teacher. I'm a certified tutor teacher. I've done, I've had 30 books out on the market. I've been on TV, um, stuff like that. You know, doesn't guarantee you success all the time. Because you do have your failure. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. That's the thing. But I'll, I'll, I'll send you stuff to you. Thank you. I no, got to no. let you go. They're knocking on the Zoom door. Okay. <laughs> have, have a good one. Bye. All right. Bye.